Is AI making our business more enjoyable for people? AI is a game changer, but implementing it the right way requires more than just putting in a new piece of tech. CEOs and leaders need to ask these four essential questions to ensure that AI and new technology really benefits their business and their operation. My name is Derek Selinger. I'm an award-winning magician and filmmaker. I've also spoken all over the world for corporations as well as giving a TEDx talk. Lately, I've been helping uh, companies and executives really get their heads around the creative process, specifically when it comes to this new magic that we're dealing with with AI. Being a master magician of a fair bit of insight to the use of magic both practically and theoretically and I'm going to be sharing some of those ideas right here with you today. The first question you need to ask is do we have a creative framework to incorporate AI? Using AI isn't just about finding the latest tool or gadget or process and throwing it at your business expecting it to change everything. In fact, if you're like many of the executives I've been speaking to, you may be feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the, the pure amount of different AI tools that are coming out every single day. Everything from ChatGPT to MidJourney, which is image creation, to uh, automation tools that help you reach out to customers, to sales tools that literally will send things out for you, to, to tools that uh, allow you to run literal robots. AI is absolutely everywhere. And later in the video, I'm gonna share with you the four types of AI uh, implementation available to us. There are literally tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of different AI tools. Some of them do the tasks better than others, and all of them seem to help, but at the same time, if you just try to implement them without a clear plan, it becomes chaos. Really, the goal here is to unlock the innovative potential of AI and not just automate existing processes while that may have an advantage on its own. The goal is to leverage AI for problem solving, not just efficiencies. So we need a creative framework to really allow AI to rise to the challenge of helping us be creative and innovative. Now, I think that it is important that all organizations and businesses and even individuals have an AI policy, but an AI policy is not a creative framework. An AI policy is basically a safeguard uh, telling you, the public, and the people that work with you where AI is appropriate to be used. For example, in a different industry, if you were a pottery industry, you made pottery and, and crafted you know, bowls and cups and those types of things, you may have a technology policy around using CNC machines to make different molds and what have you. You may say, we don't use those things because we want our pottery to be handmade. That would be a policy, but it's relying upon a creative process or method. The policy serves a creative method. So I really believe every leader and CEO needs to sit down in the immediate near-term future and develop their creative process. How does your organization or company go through the process of creating and innovating from conception to realization? How does that actually work within your organization? Then you could begin to determine how you're gonna use different tools, whether they be physical tools or tools like artificial intelligence to really augment your abilities and help you innovate at a faster rate. Question two, is there a human problem that needs to be solved? We don't wanna be just putting in processes for their own sake. We're not using AI for AI's sake. And again, this is difficult because we have shiny object syndrome. We see something new and interesting and it's like, ooh, what if we did this? In the world of magic, we experience this all the time where magicians are like, oh, look at this new trick I could do. But we've got to think about how that trick, that magic trick is going to play out for the audience. This is the same with AI, this new magic in the context of corporations and organizations. How exactly is it going to be implemented to solve a human problem? Really what I'm saying is we want to make sure that AI is aligning with a human need, helping the human being to be more creative, more innovative, and more expressive. So if there is a process that we could 
implement within our organization that really help the human being be better at what they do, then AI is gonna have a really positive lasting effect. However, if we're just putting this AI process in place because it's neat, what we're gonna find is it's gonna bog down and become cumbersome. It's like adding complications to a watch. And listen, I love horology, I love the idea of watches, and there's something beautiful about adding all these complications in, but if you're looking for a timepiece that is gonna run efficiently on time, you're looking for something that is as simple as possible and still does the job. And really our organizations and corporations are there for the purpose of getting something done, not just looking pretty. So make sure it's solving a human problem. Question three, what will AI do to our company culture? Culture is probably the thing that companies need to invest in the most. It is the company organizational culture that provides not only a pleasant place to work and, and a place for meeting for employees, but it's what is gonna drive true innovation, true change, and true excellent products or services. If you go and you start implementing AI too quickly without proper foresight, it runs the risk of disrupting the company or organization's culture. This can have unbelievably negative effects. For example, if people feel like, oh, they're just bringing this process online because they wanna replace me and get rid of me, you know that your product and your culture is going to suffer. And yes, we do look to innovative processes to make us more efficient and put out a better product. You know, cars today are generally constructed by massive machines, and we understand that was a necessary innovative process, not only for efficiency, but also for overall quality level. But we don't think of this necessarily when it comes to our food. For example, you could probably go get a burger that's made by robots in the kitchen, but there's something about a handcrafted burger. There's something about a chef in a kitchen caring about what they make. If you give me the option between a machine made burger and a chef really caring, I'm probably going to take a chef really caring. So if your organization relies on that type of cultural uh, care to create your products. You gotta be really intentional about how you bring AI on board because it has the potential of disrupting your culture. Now at the same time, if you could use AI to help with repetitive or mundane tasks to make the employees uh, experience of work more fulfilling where they're actually getting to creating things and being involved in your process, I think that implementing AI processes can be unbelievably effective. There are four things that AI does for us. It helps us ideate, iterate, create, and automate. And it's important to look at each of those processes within our overall creative uh, framework and, and, and make a decision on how this AI is going to serve all the people involved within our enterprise. How is it gonna serve the customer? How is it gonna serve the people within our organization? Because culture is made of all of these entities all working together and AI needs to serve the culture. And fourth, make sure that your AI is designed for delight as well as efficiency. When we just focus on using tools like AI for pure efficiency, it becomes very utilitarian. This is how we get the ridiculous brutalist architecture of the 1960s. We need to think about the, the feel, the aesthetic sense of what AI is doing so we could create something that is delightful for both our customers and our employees and for all involved. An example of something that is looking to delight would be like Spotify's recommendation algorithm or any of the media recommendation algorithms that is trying to anticipate what your desire or what your taste might be. Those are have the potential of actually being very delightful because if it recommends something to you that actually resonates, you feel like somehow this uh, application knows you. And this idea of designing for delight is not a, a new idea at all. In fact, you even see it in the construction of Apple. One of Steve Jobs' important innovations was the UI or the user interface. He was very, very concerned about how the Apple products 
looked aesthetically? How are they going to feel? What are they gonna look like to be in your home? His competition created these boxes, these ugly boxes with screens, and they, they worked just fine. But Jobs knew that if somebody was gonna put a computer into their space, their workspace, into their home space, it, it needed to have a quality that was delightful, that was human. And ultimately, we need to be pursuing solutions that create the same sense of delight and wonder that allow us to be even more human, that augment our humanity and not destroy or suppresses it. A CEO question here is, is AI making our business more enjoyable for people? Is it elevating the experience? And here you could see that all four of these questions all tie together in very important ways because ultimately what this is about is the human being. A process you can do right now is just go through these four questions and answer them and evaluate how you are considering AI implementation within your organization or business. And you do need to consider it. And now, innovation is speeding up in time, not slowing down. The, the amount of of time between the written word and the printing press was lengthy, but the amount of time between the internet and AI is very short. The next innovation is coming very quickly. And so it's on us to get up to speed onto what AI is and how we're gonna use it so we could be ready for the next large leap and technological evolution that is gonna help our businesses succeed in the modern world. AI is not just about efficiency, but it's about enhancing creativity, solving problems, and creating meaningful experiences. Thanks for being with me here today. Live bright, love big.